The number one issue with starting an SMMA is not actually getting clients. It's getting the confidence to deliver results to those clients. I hear this over and over and over from you guys that there's so much info on how to sell to clients, so much info on prospecting, all this stuff, but how do I actually get them results? There's no gurus talking about this. I even had a guy tell me he'd pay for multiple consultations with multiple SMMA coaches and everybody when he asked like okay how do i run the ads they just said i don't run the ads and look at him like they're a genius but that doesn't actually help him start his agency right so what's the solution here that's what i want to talk about in this video so in this video i'm hoping to fill that gap the gaping hole in this industry uh, and do my best to show in a variety of different niches how you would go about getting results for people using Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok ads. I'm not gonna be covering Google ads, I'm not gonna be covering um, SEO because I don't know how to do those, just lead generation on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, disclaimer, I don't have a ton of TikTok experience, but I do have a little bit, and a lot of the uh, principles are very similar to Facebook and Instagram, so I just thought I'd include it here. I won't be able to provide every single piece of advice you need for every single niche, but I promise by the end of this video, you will know what to do. You will know how to get results for clients. It's just a matter of gaining the confidence through practice. And that's one thing I wanna talk about just before we get into the, the actual meat of the presentation. I just wanna give me two minutes to talk about this because it's really important. In one of my previous videos, The Evolution of a Marketing Agency, I talked about how agency owners are gonna start out as freelancers, and then they're gonna to go to kind of this manager contractor relationship where they hire somebody to do the ads and then they'll be getting the clients and kind of feeding them to that contractor. And then eventually you'll scale up and you'll have a full-time employee or multiple full-time employees and you'll be the business owner overseeing the processes of what's happening inside of your company. So with that said, most people don't end up breaking past the initial freelancer stage for two reasons. One, they either try to skip it and go straight to the contractor, but the contractor doesn't know what they're doing and the person doesn't know how to find a good one because they've never run ads before and they don't know how to vet they, you know they'll believe anything anybody tells them and the second one is they start as a freelancer and they don't know what they're doing so they don't get results so it's kind of this catch-22 where you need experience to deliver results but you need to have delivered results to have experience so what is one to do there's two options number one you can go get a job and most people aren't gonna do this, but I think it's honestly underrated. This is how I started. I had eight months of, in a digital marketing job where I learned a ton about how to run ads. I learned a ton about marketing. I just studied as much as I could and actually got hands-on experience and got paid to get that experience. Really not a bad idea, and there's tons of marketing agencies that will hire entry-level people. Second option here, guys, is to work for free or cheap with your first you know, five, 10 clients so that you can get as much experience as possible without you know, having to deal with the pressure of needing to make money or needing to provide results for the people and without them having sky high expectations. And that's why I'm making this video so that if you're in that position where you don't know where to start, you can start here, use the principles in this video to go work for free or cheap, get the experience, and then eventually scale up your agency. This is a long term thing, guys. It's taken me like three and a half years to get where I am today. And that's just from when I started my agency. If you count back, it's almost four years now. So you have to keep in mind that this is a long-term thing, guys. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's not a do no work and just get as much as you want. You have to start by learning. And I started four years ago and now I'm here. So don't think it happens overnight. Awesome, so now let's get into what I've prepared for you guys. Some nice looking slides here. Let's talk about the elements of lead generation service delivery. I'm saying lead generation here because that's what the majority of you guys are gonna start with. Um, we'll cover some other ways to get results for clients, obviously, but lead generation for local businesses is like where 90% of my audience lives, so we're gonna start there. Uh, but I will provide some other tips and tricks for other uh, niches along the way so you guys understand. So first of all, there's the ad, then there's the ad targeting. Then there's the lead capture. How do we actually get the name, phone, email? Then there's the post lead capture nurturing. So how do we turn that lead into a booked consult or into a sale, depending on what it is that we're doing. And then there's the appointment scheduling and the reminders. These two go together, but um, most people, most small businesses are gonna follow this pattern where, where they put the ad out, then they capture the lead, then they turn that lead into some kind of appointment or free consult or whatever it is 
and you want to get them not only to schedule that but to arrive at that console and that's why we have the reminders there so we'll talk about all these things in this video let's go ahead and start with ads what are the elements of the actual ads and something important to note here guys is most people just think like oh smma i'm starting an agency all i have to do is the ad like no it's not how it works <laughs> a lot of people just end on on the third one too and just do the lead capture which is okay as a beginner but if you want to get advanced then you need to get into this post lead capture nurturing and then also the appointment scheduling and reminders so let's start at the very beginning which is ads what are the elements of a good ad or just an ad in general first of all the picture uh, or the video the creative sometimes this is called uh, the copy so you've got headlines and then you've got the body text and then call to action buttons where the people actually click to go to the next part to the next stage of your marketing campaign so i want you to look at the examples here of three different types of placements of ads so we've got a facebook ad here and we've got an instagram feed ad here which is different than a instagram story ad which i haven't included here and then we've also got a TikTok ad here look how different these are on the facebook side you've got this headline down here and you've got a lot more room to actually put some text up that people are going to be able to see and the name of the business is going to be a lot bigger on instagram look at this his name is super small and he's got about <laughs> not even two lines uh, to show what he's talking about so that's why the video the creative is much more important on instagram than it is on facebook i mean it's equally important but uh, it's you have less to play with when it comes to text on on instagram so you have to really focus on the creative on tiktok it's almost all creative look at that i think like i can't remember what the character limit is but this is pretty much all you can do uh, when it comes to writing but this many words is pretty much all you can do there's no room for headlines there's nothing else it has to be a video so you know what are you going to do so hopefully this gets the wheels turning in your head if i'm doing facebook ads versus instagram ads versus tiktok ads what is going to be involved in creating the actual ad for the client now let's look specifically at creative what do you notice about these uh, what sticks out to you which one do you actually like let's look at this one two numbers one phone this is like perfect for instagram there's a lot of these on instagram where it's just like the words are on the picture because they have to be on the picture because there's no room for words like we saw here uh this one's cool this one not my favorite this one is also not my favorite um this one's quite cool you can see them they're smiling and then it says this is their their headline you know coaches make thirty thousand dollars with your facebook group in the next 90 days guarantee or we'll work with you one-on-one -on -one or for free until you do this is their offer right there very simple they put it in the picture i'm sure this does quite well for them because they're just stating what their offer is and they're putting it out there for everyone to see as as clearly and as blatantly as possible this one's quite cool as well i like the sorry let me take myself away so you can actually see this one um Cole Gordon, you can see here, he's saying, our setters performer, you don't pay. This is like an additional headline that he's putting within the creative. So if this was running on Facebook, you'd have a headline here, technically kind of a headline here. This is the body copy, but then you'd also have the headline here at the top of the video. Now let's look at a couple other options. These are for more local business type ads. This one's cool. Uh, them standing in front of the office, like, hey, people know you know i've noticed this works really well for like medical clinics and other things like that just team members standing outside the door smiling thumbs up or just saying like welcome that kind of thing kills it i have one of one of my doctors standing outside his practice just like with his hands by his side and you can see like the name of his practice behind him that one does really well uh, here's another one not amazing stuck image it's got the name of the practice here and then it says get an orthodontic screening by age seven okay like it's all right it's not great this one here give yourself a healthy smile it's okay she's you know pointing smiling it looks good but there's a little too much going on here i think this one is very cool because of the colors it's definitely going to stop people from scrolling uh this is for an escape room i believe and then this one is um you can't see the full picture here but basically just like somebody looking down at somebody else you can't really see the faces i, I blocked the faces out just in case you know people don't want their faces out on my youtube video but um 
this one isn't great because no one's really looking at the camera. Um, but you know, who knows, maybe it would perform well. And that's another thing is you just have to try different pieces of content a lot of times until you find something that works. So as far as the principles and tricks that can help you to be successful when it comes to the creative on your ads, no matter the platform, is to think about stopping the scroll. Think about the average consumer that you're trying to reach. What are they doing on whatever platform it is you're running the ad? They're just scrolling through looking at pictures. And so if they see an ad, you know, 99% of the time, people are just gonna scroll right past that ad. But what are they gonna do with your ad? How do you make it so that they don't scroll right past yours so that they click on it and they're interested and they submit their information? They take time out of their day to actually do what your ad is asking them to do. That's the first step in doing that is stopping the scroll. So see how you can make things like this picture here, eye-catching. Next up, try different color backgrounds. Uh, anything that blends in with the Facebook feed or the Instagram feed, you know, like a completely white ad or something like that probably isn't going to do super well because it's not going to provide any visual contrast and therefore won't stop the scroll. There's some people who would take their ad and even just Photoshop a different color background into the ad. So maybe one is red, one is yellow, and then they just test and see which one does better. And believe it or not, little stuff like that can actually make a big difference. The third thing here is to think of it like a YouTube thumbnail. YouTube thumbnails are so important because if it stops you from scrolling and then it gets you to click, that's the first step in actually getting you to the YouTube video and then watching the YouTube videos, which is what a YouTuber wants you to do. So this is where we go back to that Instagram thing where you really don't have much text. It's the same thing with a YouTube title and thumbnail. The thumbnail is like actually probably 60 to 70% of getting someone to click because it gets them to stop. Then they look at the title. They're like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm going to click on it. Um, you have to think about it that same way and maybe add some extra headlines or text in the picture to make it so that people want to click. Next up here, sometimes completely organic photos work well, sometimes they don't. By organic, I mean like just pictures of, you know, if it's a dental clinic, like the doctor taking a selfie with his team or a doctor or the doctor standing next to one of his patients. Sometimes things like that do really, really well. And then sometimes stock images actually perform better. As a general rule, I would say that organic looking photos do quite well, uh, much better than stock photos. But in certain markets or for certain brands, for some reason, we found that stock images tend to work better for certain clients that we have, or maybe just one of those organic photos that we've turned into kind of a text looking ad um, ends up performing well for some people. You just have to test. Next up, we've got sometimes videos work well, sometimes they don't. I've had a ton of people tell me, oh, you should turn you know, your picture into like a three second video. And then Facebook thinks that it's doing really well because it's this three second video and people are watching it multiple times, but I've never actually seen that work better than just a picture for my clients at least. Your niche might be different. So you just have to you know, figure it out. On TikTok, you have to use a video. So what are you gonna do when it comes to that? And you'll have to think about what that when it comes to service delivery. Then the last point here is it's about getting them to click. If you can just get them to click on the ad, then you can get them to the next page and then you can focus on that page and getting them to the next page or the next step. And that's pretty much all marketing is about. It's just like, how do I get them from step one to step two, step two to step three, three to four, and focusing on every single part of the process and getting them there. Super, super important. Awesome. Now let's talk about headlines. Facebook is pretty much the only place where we have headlines. So these are three Facebook ad examples. We've got here over 30 years of victory and then the trophy emoji. A path to a healthy smile starts here, exclamation mark, and then Houston, Texas, ATV rentals. And then you can also see there's this kind of sub headline here. You're a number one priority. Our offices provide specialized services for your child to feel comfortable, happy, and safe. ATV rental service. What do you think about these? Which one do we like the most? Um, I think over 30 years of victory is quite cool, but would it actually help somebody click? I'm not actually sure. This one, Houston, Texas ATV rentals is very basic, but I think it might actually perform better than this one because it's just super clear about what they do. Um, and then this one in the middle, I would say is not really built to actually get people to book right away. The path to a healthy smile starts here. Like it sounds nice, but I don't think it would perform very well. Who knows? I might be wrong. It's all about testing. Uh, let's look at some more headlines here. We've got eating disorder treatment, very basic, very, you know, this is what we're doing, which I actually quite like. 
revamp your landscaping this fall, same thing. Why not safer schools and safer neighborhoods? Pretty good as well. Uh, this one's like uh, somebody running for public office. So, you know, it's, it's uh, tough to really measure results on that one, but pretty good uh, for, I would say pretty good for what he's trying to do. I don't love eating disorder treatment. They could probably spice this up quite a bit. Revamp your landscaping this fall is good, but you could add an emoji here. You could add an exclamation mark um, to make things better. I said, we're not gonna cover Google ads in this presentation and that's right. But if that's a service you wanna provide, this is the same concept. So let's look at, let's read all of these and see which one we like the best. Watson Orthodontics, book your summer appointment. Number one dentist near you, 89 new patient special. Dentist near me, 29 emergency and pain. Official Aspen Dental, schedule an appointment today. Which of these makes you wanna click the most? I think it depends what I'm actually searching for. So if I search for orthodontics, these two are not gonna entice me at all because that's not what I'm searching for. This one maybe, uh, but I would definitely do Watson Orthodontics, book your summer appointment today. This is the most enticing to me if I search that, but if I searched dental office near me, then I would probably click on one of these. Uh, now let's look at these plumbing ones. Local plumbing contractor, 24 seven emergency plumbers, best plumbers in Utah, emergency plumbing available. Call now, same day service, recommended emergency plumber. Which of these do you like best? I think I like this, 24 seven emergency plumbers, recommended emergency plumber is okay. I like the local call now, same day service is pretty good as well. So you can see you know, why this might make me click or not click. And Google ads, it's like literally all that you have. You don't have creative at all. All you have is the headline and some body text. So now let's talk about some principles and tricks specific to ad headlines. First of all, you guessed it, you're just trying to get people to click. That's all it is when it comes to headlines they are very important. Uh, model what you see working so you can look at other industries. One of my favorite things to do is just look up ads from other industries. You can use Facebook ad library to do that. If you don't know what that is, just go to facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash library and then search for ads in your uh, whatever niche and you can look and see, oh, that's a cool headline. I liked that. Or just pay attention like you're walking down the street and you see a headline from something like, oh, that's really good. I wonder if that would work for this client. And you kind of spin that headline another way and see what happens. Um, use a headline analyzer or generator. These are actually really cool tools that can help you do this. So, so let's go check one out here, headline generator. Let's say we're writing one about plumbing. Plumbing, get headlines. What plumbing has in common with Drake? That's hilarious. Best type of plumbing for every zodiac sign, the best plumbing movies ranked, what research says about plumbing, the frightening effect of climate change on plumbing. Obviously none of these actually make sense right now. Um, but you could kind of take the beginning of this, the 15 best plumbing podcasts of 2021 and change it into, you know, the 15 best plumbers in whatever area or uh, six ways to, these are kind of good for blog posts, it looks like. But play around with different tools. One, copy.ai, jarvis.ai, or I think they rebranded to Jasper, actually. Uh, all of these tools will write copy for you and you can just use it to kind of get your brain flowing and see what, might work or what might not, and not have to rely wholly on yourself just coming up with every single good headline. Next up, think of it like a YouTube title, same concept that I talked about before. You've gotta get people to click. You have to explain the value proposition of what you're trying to sell in a very concise way so that they want to click, and then you keep going from there. Don't be too wordy, this is huge. And then also don't overdo it. People can tell when you're trying to oversell things. Facebook actually has like a AI that will go through and read if you're over promising or if you're being crazy. So if you're saying something like, you know, this magical superfood helps you lose 10 pounds in minutes, like a lot of people are going to click on that. But once they click, they're going to be like, oh, no, there's no way. And, and that's going to negatively affect your ads. You want to promise what's actually happening, but not over promise to the point where people aren't actually following through with the action that you want them to take. Um, some really cool headline examples I wanted to include here. It's not soap, it's Dove. This is a really famous one uh, from Ogilvy, who's one of the like OG marketers. This is how he put Dove into a category of its own where it's, you know, it's moisturizer, it's not just soap. Uh, next up, How to Win Friends and Influence People, one of the best-selling books of all time. People want this. And so it's explained very clearly and they want, they bought the book for that reason. Is the life of a child worth $1 to you? 
Very good headline. Very, very good headline. Uh, our setters perform or you don't pay. That's the Cole Gordon one. I thought that was quite good. They laughed when I sat down at the piano, but then I started to play. Makes you want to click, right? So think about how you can take these examples and apply them to whatever your niche is. Hey guys, I apologize for the change of scenery and change of audio quality and all that, but I wanted to pop in here because there's a super important point that I need to make. And it's about headlines and the warmth of your audience. So I'm gonna put this quote up on the screen that really explains this quite well. If your prospect is aware of your product and has realized it can satisfy their desire, your headline starts with the product. If he is not aware of your product, but only has the desire itself, your headline starts with the desire. If he is not yet aware of what he really seeks, but is concerned with the general problem, your headline starts with the problem and crystallizes it into a specific need. So that's by Eugene Schwartz, who's like one of the godfathers of modern day advertising or uh, just advertising in general. And the reason that it's so important is that you have to realize who you're talking to. Every time that you're writing an ad, if you're trying to attract people that are hot and like ready to buy right away, they'll probably already know what it is. They'll already want to do it. And you have to make sure that your headline speaks like that. In these cases, you don't have to include as much context. You don't have to include as much uh, detail. And it's just a lot easier to close somebody that's hot. A lot of the time you'll probably be dealing with people who are warm, uh, but not hot. So they're aware, as Eugene Schwartz said, of the solution to their problem, but they, but they don't yet know about your client or the fact that they can help them. And so you have to educate them on how good the client is and why the person should care about their specific business. And then lastly, you've got cold audiences. These are the hardest to convert, but you need to make sure that if you're running ads to a cold audience, it explains it starts with the problem and says, hey, do you have this problem? And then it starts to explain the solution to that problem. So let's say I was writing ads for my coaching program. The ad to the hot audience, these are people that already know me, would be like, hey, Keaton Walker just came out with a new coaching program. Click here to find out what it is. People who know me, like me, and trust me don't need any more than that to click. Uh, secondly, people who are warm, maybe they know about starting an agency or SMMA, but they don't know about me. I would start out with the headline, maybe I thought about starting an SMMA, but don't know where to start. That's the, they're aware of the solution, but not the problem. The cold audience doesn't even know about the opportunity of starting an agency or an SMMA. And so I would say something like sick of your current job and looking for the next thing, want to start a business, but don't know where to start. You can see how this targets different levels of that buyer funnel. All right, now let's talk about body copy. Again, remember in Instagram, we have very little body copy to play with and no headline. Um, here's an example of uh, Rodizio Grill, super short copy. We love celebrating birthdays. As you know, we sent out a coupon for $1 birthday dinner to our club Rodizio subscribers. Sign up today, $1 birthday dinner. That makes me wanna click. Sam Ovens on the other hand, likes writing novels in his Facebook ads and people go through and read them. Uh, if you don't think they will read it, they actually will read it. A lot of people will scan, but this is kind of how you can provide value uh, in the ad before they even click and make them want to click more because they're just like, wow, this is really cool. Here he's talking more about results rather than providing value. You can read through this whole thing. As much of it is available uh, on the screen right now, but you can also go to Facebook ads library and read his ads. Uh, a couple more examples here. Swim Kids, this is my family business. Um, just, I think, some really good copy here. Uh, get Air, which is like a trampoline park. Welcome to Get Air Pickerington, where we bring the very best and largest trampoline park to the Pickerington area. Um, not great. This doesn't make me want to click. This one, CEO of Hyros, Alex Becker. Hyros AI plus print tracking is guaranteed to increase ad ROI, but grandfather pricing ends May 24th. Act before it's too late. He's basically said the entire thing that he's going to say and the rest of this in one sentence, which is super helpful when it comes to body copy. You have to make sure that you're putting as much as possible above the fold because not everyone's like this whole thing isn't going to show up on the Facebook feed. Just this first two lines is going to show up. Uh, so principles and tricks when it comes to body copy, 
The first one to two lines are like a second headline. So you have to make sure that's packs as much of a punch as possible. Like I was showing with uh, Alex Becker there. Pain, agitate, solve. This is a copywriting framework where you talk about the pain somebody's in, then you agitate that pain and say, you know, basically drive the knife in further and say, this is a big problem. Then you say, I have the solution for it. It makes people want to click. Hook, story, offer, another copywriting framework. You hook them with something that's just out of the ordinary or gets them to stop scrolling. And then you tell them a story and then you pitch them on a small offer. So an example of this is um, there's this guy that did fit to fat to fit. He was a personal trainer and he was super fit. So he decided to gain like 50 to 80 pounds over six months and then lose it again over the next six months. And using that as his hook and then telling the story of why he did it because he wanted to understand his clients who you know needed to lose weight, he wanted to understand them better, makes people like, wow, that's so cool. And then when he says, just click on this thing to get a free report or whatever it is, then they definitely wanna click on it. Next up, we've got awareness, interest, desire, action. Another copywriting framework, you make people aware, then you generate a little bit more interest about what's going to happen, and then you make them desire that, and then you get them to take action. This is like, you do this in the ad, then once they click on the ad, then you do this on the next thing that you have them do, then you do it again. It's like the process, more than a copywriting framework, it's the process that you should think. Every single person has to go through this process to click to the next stage of my marketing campaign. Next up, learn to break the rules when you need to. Uh, this one's really cool. I think there's a, a Sam Ovens ad that literally just like, it was green and then it had the word ad on it. And the first line was, this is a paid ad. Its purpose is to get your attention. Like that breaks the typical rules of what's going on with ads. Because typically you're trying to get people to just not think about the fact that it's an ad, but then he flipped that on its head and just said like, hey, this is what I'm doing. If you want this thing, click on this. Like just very direct, which is uh, ended up working for him for quite a while, I think. And I saw some other people copying that ad style. And then lastly here, write something that makes people feel like you understand them. This one is huge. If you don't understand what people want, if you don't understand who they are, you don't understand, they feel like you don't know their problems. And this goes for everything, whatever you're selling, even if it's like laundry detergent, that's gonna be really probably quite a bit easier to sell than something that you have to explain because everybody already understands what it is. But if you can help people, you know, realize, like help busy moms realize that you care about them because of your laundry detergent being better than everybody else's um, and, you know, washing the clothes better so that they save time, that's huge. Same thing with orthodontics. That's what we talk about a lot. It's like, hey, we do same day uh, starts. So you can start the same day that you come in for your consultation, saves you time. We do, um, we have weekend and evening appointments so that, you know, you can come in and not have to disrupt your kids' schedules that's super helpful as well because people really care about that kind of thing and when you can help on the other end there's like the coaching side so sam ovens is really good at this he's just he's making people feel like he understands their problems intimately which he does and when they read their ad it's like wow this guy tore a page out of my diary i need to work with him because he obviously understands what i'm talking about you strike a chord uh, whether you're doing it for the busy mom or you're doing it for the person that wants coaching, you figure out how to strike a chord with them in a way that they feel understood. Hey guys, popping in here again because I wanted to suggest something that I forgot to mention, which is this company called Ad Zombies has a really great service that allows you to do copywriting with uh, flat fee. So I, I believe it's like $50 for them to write a Facebook ad for you. You submit all the information about the client and they will write the copy for you. I've gotten some really good ideas from them and I would highly recommend this. If you're creating your own ads from scratch, why not just outsource the copy? These guys are really good at it. So check them out if you're interested. All right, now let's talk about ad targeting. There's two types of ad targeting and nobody ever differentiates these and it makes me really upset. So I'm gonna talk about it right now. There's local, targeting and then there's going to be non-local campaigns. Local targeting is not complicated. It's really not complicated at all. Like you literally just put a geographic area around where you want to target and you leave pretty much everything else open, depending on the service, right? But when you're targeting a geographic area, you can't put more like interests and stuff on there because it's going to be just too small of an audience and it's not going to work. 
So an audience size of 100K plus is ideal. This is for Facebook. I don't know. TikTok's got its own thing going on. So that's just for Facebook and Instagram. And then no detailed targeting, as I mentioned. That's how local lead gen works. I'll show you how to set this up inside of Ads Manager right now. Uh, but just these are the general principles. Like it's really not that complicated. Non-local campaigns. So if you're doing like e-commerce or you're running ads for a coach or something, like the biggest piece of advice I can give you guys is don't overthink this. It's really not that hard. It's more about your ad creative, your headline, your body copy that I just talked about. All of those things are so, 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 so much more important than the targeting. Targeting is like the most straightforward thing about ads. As a general guideline, an audience of 1 million plus is ideal. You can go way bigger than that, uh, but this is probably the minimum I would do. And then try for as many offshoots of the main audience as possible. So let's say you're targeting like people who want to start a business. There's many different ways to find people that want to start a business inside of Facebook. There's probably an interest targeting for that, but you could also do like people who follow Tony Robbins because people who follow Tony Robbins are probably interested in, you know, personal development and starting a business, things like that. So you can target people that already have people like that in their audience or you can target the interest specifically. I'll dive more into that. All right, so here we are. We've got Facebook on the left and TikTok on the right, and I'm gonna show you how to set up your targeting correctly for both local-based ads and non-local-based ads. So let's start with um, just this campaign level on both sides. So you can, if you scroll over here, we've got campaign, ad group, ad on TikTok, and then on Facebook, we've got campaigns, ad sets, and ads. Very similar experience here, setting up both of these types of ads. So we're gonna click create here. And on Facebook, you can see we have all these options, brand awareness, traffic engagement, messages, conversions, store traffic. And on TikTok, we've got reach, um, basically the same thing, but just a few, like a couple options less on the TikTok side. What you have to understand about this is it's actually a form of targeting, but it's not demographical based targeting, it's behavioral based targeting. So if you click on traffic, for example, it's going to target people who are most likely to click on an ad that will take them to a website. If you do video views, it's gonna target people who are most likely to view videos because they like doing that. Messages, most people who are most likely to submit messages or, or talk to you via messenger. Conversions, this is gonna uh, target people that Facebook knows are likely to convert on your page. So. Uh, that might mean that they're opting in, they're putting in their name, phone, and email and going to the thank you page on a funnel, or it might mean that they're you know, buying something on your e-commerce store or something like that. Um, on this awareness side, brand awareness and reach, these don't have any uh, really type of behavioral targeting. This is just going to be show my ad to as many people as possible. And you might think that's a good idea, but it's not actually targeting them in the way that uh, will help you get the best results typically. A really good example of a business that might use brand awareness for reach campaigns is Coca-Cola. They don't want you to click on the ad and go buy Coca-Cola right now. They just want you to be thinking like, oh yeah, I want some Coke. And the next time you're at the movies, you go get some, or next time you're you know, at the store, you're like, oh, I remember that ad. That looks so good and you buy some Coca-Cola. Video views is a very similar type of campaign where it's just targeting like, hey, I just want people to watch this video. And one more thing here is that depending on what type of business you're running, if you're running e-commerce, for example, uh, there's a strategy called the carpet bomb strategy where you would run a video views campaign or brand awareness or reach campaign and just try to reach as many people as possible. That's the carpet bomb. You just drop it and see who engages. And then you retarget that audience with a more targeted, you know, a, a traffic campaign or a conversion campaign or something like that. And what you have to understand here is that each of these is, you know, awareness, consideration, conversion. These are all steps in the marketing funnel. And so typically, uh, if you're running, if you have massive ad budgets, like big companies would always have like, okay, this is our awareness section of the campaign. Then they'll have a consideration version of the campaign and then a conversion part of the campaign and slowly move everybody down the same funnel. That's not really how it works for local businesses, just because typically their uh, area is too small. Um, and their budget is too small to actually justify doing some crazy retargeting campaign for every single local business you work with. All right, so on the Facebook side, we're gonna select messages, go ahead and click continue. And then we're gonna select lead generation on the TikTok side. And 
here we're going to do campaign budget optimization. We have to spend at least $50 a day on TikTok. So we'll click continue. And we're also going to turn on campaign budget optimization on Facebook and we'll do uh, $20. So basically what we're doing with campaign budget optimization is saying, hey, I want to target. Uh, I just want a, a blanket budget for the entire campaign. And I don't want to set the budget at the ad set level or the ad group level, which would mean the targeting. So you'll see a little bit more about what that means later. But typically, you're pretty much always going to turn on campaign budget optimization um, just as like a general blanket rule. So now this is where things start to get a little bit different. So I'm just going to do Facebook first and then we'll go over to TikTok. Um, so now you can see here I've selected messages. I would come in here and rename this if I wasn't doing um, a demo here. And then you can see there's a, a couple of different types here. We can do a click to message or a sponsored message. Sponsored message is where you would basically like send an email, but to everybody's messenger. So like a, a message that actually pops up in their inbox. Click to message is like, here's an ad, click and message us. So that's what we want to do. And we're just going to do messenger and Instagram here. Looks like this is running for my agency page. That's fine for this demo. Uh, I always just keep budget and schedule the same. Here, I don't do like an end date or whatever else. You just want to show Facebook that you're running things for an indefinite period of time. Then we come here to audience. This is where the targeting really happens. So for a local business, let's say we're working with, you know, Smith Chiropractic in New York or something. What we would do is come here and skip the custom audiences and then come here to locations, get rid of whatever's by default selected. And then we can come in here and search Smith Chiropractic. Sometimes this is going to pull up an address, sometimes it won't. So instead of that, let's go ahead and type in Smith Chiropractic on our um, and looks like we've got one here in Glendale, Arizona. So we're going to grab this address here. And then we're just going to paste that in here. There you go. So that's where we're targeting 10 miles around a chiropractic office is probably quite big, especially given that we're almost at a million people here. So for a local business, I'm just going to keep bringing this down until I'm at about 100 to 300,000. So for these guys, we might even do four, four miles. Looks like that would be like pretty, it's a really good group of people that uh, we could target. Uh, and if the results aren't great here, we can always increase them. You know, when it comes to people living in or recently in this location, I typically leave it on this unless it's a very touristy area. And then you can turn it to just people living in this location. And you'll see that bumps it down quite a bit. Um, and the reason for that is some people don't have like, I live in Glendale, Arizona, or wherever they live on their Facebook profile, or Facebook can't accurately track based on some of the factors that they have on them where they live. But they can tell that they were recently in this area. And it's probably, you know, they probably live there. So uh, just leave it there. Ages, let's see, most people go to the chiropractor, say 25 and above. Great, that's brought us down to 185 to 220. That's about right. We're gonna do all genders. And that's it, guys. That's it when it comes to targeting for local businesses. You really don't need to go heavier than that. Like, it's just not that complicated. Like, if you're just targeting for local service based businesses, guys. All you have to do is draw a radius around, try to get between 100 and 300,000 people and start running some ads and test it on that audience. And nine times out of 10, that's going to work for you. When it comes to placements down here, typically I do manual placements and only select Facebook feed and Instagram feed. And sometimes we'll do stories and reels as well. But we typically just take off the rest of these because they don't work quite as well as Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. So that's how I target like Literally, that's the secret sauce, quote unquote, secret sauce for local business ad targeting. It's not that difficult. Now, let's talk about if we were going nationwide and let's say we were doing ads for a coach or something like that, a business coach, how would we target for that? So let's say uh, in this case, I'm in the UK. All right, so we've got uh, the entire United Kingdom. In this case, it'd probably be better to switch it to people living in this location. As you can see, that didn't change our estimated audience size at all. 
And then we can come here to age and we're gonna say most people hiring a business coach for the type of coach that we're hiring are between 20 and let's say 40. And that's brought us down to 23 million, which is quite good. And we're gonna say mostly men are the ones that are gonna work with us. This is a great audience size for uh, coaches. If you've done more work with coaches, you might know more about this. I'm just giving you a general overview. Uh, most times people tend to overthink this. So. so now this audience size is quite big, but we also haven't narrowed it down at all. Like we don't just want 11 to 13 million men. We want you know, the 1 million men out of all of those men who are the most interested in business, entrepreneurship, actually run businesses, you know? So there's multiple ways to target them. Uh, one, you can target them based on demographics. Secondly, you can target them based on interests. And then lastly, you can target them based on behavior, which we already did a little bit of behavior uh, before with the behavioral based targeting, but there's some more that you can add here in the detailed targeting. So let's go ahead and if we click on browse here, you're gonna see under demographics, we can do education, education level, select any of these. We can do financial, uh, top 10% of zip codes. This is only in the US looks like. Uh, life events, away from family, away from hometown, uh, anniversary within however many days. These aren't super relevant for us, but you can see how it might be relevant for maybe a restaurant who wants to run an anniversary campaign or a birthday campaign. Um, friends of men with a birthday in zero to seven days. Uh, this would be really good for e-commerce potentially. A long distance relationship, new job, new relationship, newly engaged, newly wed, re recently moved. There's a lot of stuff in here that you could potentially use. Uh, come here to parents. Uh, if this person is a parent with kids between these ages, then you would want, maybe want to target them for a specific business relationship, relationship status, and work. We want to see which industry they work in. So for us, I think we'd select small business to business enterprise employees. We don't want the employees. We'd want the employers in this case. So let's see. Business decision maker titles and interests or business and finance. So if we select this, our estimated audience size went way, way down. So we're gonna have to keep adding in more and more people. Business and finance, that might be a good one. Business decision makers, obviously also a big one. And then you can see that the estimated audience size isn't going up. Like it doesn't make a difference if I do this or it made a difference of like 300. Not a huge deal, just, um, just keep trying. So then we come in here, those are some uh, specific demographics. But then if we come here to interests, let's see business and industry, we might do people who are interested in business. Okay, there you go, 7 million. That's probably a bit too broad, so I'm gonna take it off because it's just business and increased our audience size too much. So we'll come here, entrepreneurship, that's much better. Uh, the audience size is small, but we know that that's a lot more targeted. Anything else? Personal finance, that's probably a good one. Uh, let's see, investments, people are invest interested in investing. Um, real estate, small business, great. Technology, computers, uh, probably none of these would be good for us, but that's some great things and that's, that's put our audience right about where we want it. Okay, <clears throat> when it comes to behaviors, you can come in here look at digital activity. So you could do new active business, less than 12 months, less than 24 months, less than six months, or greater than six months. I'm not actually sure which one that means. Uh, so we could select one of these, like, okay, they've got a new business in the last two years. Um, digital activities, console gamers, Facebook payments users, anybody running uh, Facebook ads, this would be great. Uh, Facebook page admins, typically this is gonna be really good for us, so business page admins. Um, you know, new page admin, somebody who started a new business, great. And then internet operating system use, we could do any of these. Uh, expats, mobile device user, uh, based on what they're using on the, which mobile device they're using, we can target them. Purchase behavior, engage shoppers, this one will charge you more if you select it, uh, but it's gonna find a lot of people who are, you know, starting to, 
buy stuff online or or Facebook can tell is about to buy stuff online. Awesome. So you can see we've, you know, defined this pretty well, but there's a lot more things that aren't just on the browse section that we could use to target. One thing that I like to do is come here to suggestions and just scroll down and look at all these home business. That's perfect. Um, let's see. I like the Facebook uh, payments users. This would be like people who are currently running ads or business owners. So we could add those on. Um, startup company. That's great. Return on investment owner and CEO also perfect. Uh, but now let's say we're a coaching business, but for a specific type of like online business. So another thing we can do is think about influencers that these people might be following and try to target their audiences. Sometimes they're available, sometimes they're not. So for example, let's say we were targeting online business owners that are interested in funnels. We could search up Russell Brunson. And that's an interest that uh, we could add. We could also search up, let's say Tony Robbins. Looks like Tony's not popping up. Sometimes you have to kind of scroll back. Um, we could also do like Billy Jean. Let's see if he's an option on here. You can't target him. Russell Brunson is the only one we can find right now, but you could make a list of influencers and see which ones are available to target. This also works really well for e-commerce. Quick note here, guys. When I say this works really well for e-commerce, not only can you target influencers, but you can target other big companies. So for example, I gave a consultation once for a candle making company and I looked up the biggest candle making companies and we were able to target those using Facebook ads manager. So you're literally just targeting people that you already know, love these massive candle companies and offering them the opportunity to come to your candle company or whatever e-commerce company you've got. Check that out if you're running e-commerce ads. Awesome. Now, when it comes to languages, you probably want to just make sure you're speaking with uh, people who speak English. So you could, that'll narrow down your audience a little bit. Um, and then manual placements, again, you know, it's up to you when it comes to that. But this is the process of targeting for kind of a broad market. And you don't have to, you know, shoot for a certain audience size here. If you get a really big audience, then Facebook's going to do a good job at kind of narrowing it down working with the, the right size of audience. All right, awesome. So that's how you do targeting for a nationwide campaign. Let's start with local businesses on TikTok. So this automated creative optimization, create multiple combinations of creative, creative assets, including videos and ad text. Ad delivery would be automated to allow your audience the combinations that can maximize your results. Uh, this could be a good option. It could be a bad option, depending on what niche you're in. You just kind of have to um, figure that out for yourself. And then you can do this custom targeting or automatic targeting automatically show your ads to relevant users. So this probably wouldn't work too well. If you're trying to target for a local business, custom targeting is what you're want, going to want to do. So you'd come here to United States and then you could come in, click the down arrow on United States. You could go down the state and deselect or select other states on here. These DMAs, I believe are specific areas that you could target. So, for example, if you wanted to target the Austin area, it's just like the greater area around Austin, Texas, then you could deselect everything here or just come in here and get rid of United States and do Austin DMA. Yeah, there you go. And you can see the available audience there. You can turn off specific areas of who you're targeting, do gender targeting there. And then it looks like you can include or exclude certain things here. Uh, if I was targeting for a local business, I would keep this probably as open as possible because it's already telling me my audience size is too narrow and I'm targeting the entire Austin area. That's like 500,000 people. Um, if we come in here and add interests or video interactions or all of these other things, then we're going to further narrow our audience, which we don't want to do. Uh, so now it's saying that we should turn on targeting expansion. So it'll increase your chance of reaching a broader audience and achieving more conversions, but doesn't really work like you don't want to reach a broader audience if you're in a specific area for your local business. So I would recommend keeping this off. Again, I haven't run TikTok ads. I'm just like taking a gander at this while we uh, go through this video together. Uh, but this is how I would do the targeting if I was doing it for the first time. Then you can select the same thing to run it continuously or run it within a date range. Uh, you can run it all day or you can select a specific time of day to run it. I would recommend doing it all day, especially with a narrow audience. 
And then you can do an optimization goal. We want leads for sure. And that's how I would do local based targeting on TikTok. Now, if you were doing targeting for that same coach or an e-commerce brand, let's say we would do, let's say United States, target the entire United States. And we're gonna do just English. And there you can see like we've got a pretty good audience there. And then we're gonna come here to interest. Let's say we're doing an e-commerce ad and things are quite um, limited here. So games and compared to Facebook, the interests and like other things that we can do are pretty limited, but we could come in here and let's say we're selling a, a pet e-commerce product. We could come in here and do pets. People are interested in pets, great. That's narrowed our audience quite a bit, but it's still good. Video interactions. Uh, so if they've watched till the end or liked of any of these different categories you could do as well. Um, and you can do it within 15 days or seven days. Uh, people who've carried out the following interactions with creators, followed or viewed the profile of, let's say, family type creators or uh, drama creators, okay? Then, yeah, you know, same thing here. You can have the bidding and op optimization, et cetera. And then you would click next, the next page where we'd set up the ad. And that's the same thing on Facebook. Awesome. Hey guys, just popping in here because I realized I forgot to explain the structure of how you should set up these campaigns. We talked about the settings for the campaign level, the ad set level, and um, we didn't really talk about the ad level. So once you've created um, the correct campaign and ad set targeting, um, what you're going to want to do is come into the ad level and you're going to paste the, the text and the headlines that we talked about in the copy section. You're going to you know set the call to action to whatever you want it to be. And then you're going to create the form or the messenger bot, which I'll show you in the next section. Uh, but what you want to do actually is once you've typed in, so let's say I come in here and I say, looking to start an agency, but don't know where to begin. And then my headline, it's like best SMMA coaching. And then I add my picture in. I don't know if I have any good pictures in here. Let's see. Uh, okay, let's do this picture of me. It's really old. Um, so, same for temporary error. So, this is what that looks like. Um, and there we go. On Facebook, that's what it looks like. So, now what you're going to want to do is test one variable per test that you do. So, if you come in here um, with duplicate, I've duplicated that ad, and then we're going to duplicate it again. And what you want to do is just test the images. So if you're pretty confident about the copy, which you should be if you followed everything that I talked about in here, you just come in here and you swap out the picture for a different picture. Let's go into ad media, and let's just select like this one. And then I would come to this one. And I would edit it, edit media, add media, and I'd add this one. There you go. So now we've got three ads under one ad set with one set of copy, one kind of copy, one headline, one body copy, uh, and then three different pictures. And that's one of those pictures is going to do better than the other two. So we'll just run all three so that Facebook has some variation to kind of put into that. If you're curious about how this works, go check out another video I created, which is how to run Facebook ads. It's got some more information on the algorithm there. So this is how I would set this up. If you're running national level campaigns, you might need a whole other ad set. So you could come in here and test different targeting. So you click duplicate. Uh, so you would come into this ad set and you would change the targeting here to be instead of the United Kingdom, maybe you're targeting people in the US or instead of people in the US that want to start businesses, you're starting, you're targeting people in the US that want, uh, you know, that are interested in investing or something like that, just to see if a different audience for some reason performs better. But underneath this ad set, you don't want to test any different types of ads before you've run a test and seen what's actually worked. Um, unless of course you're calling out a different avatar based on different targeting there. So this is in general, how you set up the campaigns. If you're running local 
based ads. You only need one ad set, three ads, sometimes only two ads, and sometimes I'll just turn off the ads that aren't doing as well. So I um, hope that helps. I know we can't go into every single detail on how to run campaigns in this uh, video. So this is generally how you'll set it up and just make sure you set up the one perfectly before you duplicate it so that you don't have to keep doing all the, the same effort um, on the rest of the ads. So you'd go in here, finish everything, including where you're going to capture the lead, and then you duplicate this twice, just swap out the picture. Um, and that's how you run ads and that's how you structure the ad account. Thanks guys. All right, so the next thing we need to discuss is we've talked about the ad, we've talked about the ad targeting. Now, how do we actually capture the lead and you know collect their name, phone, and email? There's three main ways that pretty much everybody's going to do this. Number one is Facebook Messenger. Two is a lead form, which we selected for our TikTok campaign. So we'll show you that there. And then landing pages is an option as well, which we'll cover at the end. So first let's talk about Facebook Messenger. Let's hop back into Facebook here. We set up a Messenger campaign. And so at the very end here, it's gonna say start conversation. So the message template for our ad is to either create a new or use existing uh, start conversations or generate leads or advanced setup uh, messenger only. So this advanced setup, you would be using a third party app similar to uh, chat fuel or many chat to set up a bot that can ask people specific questions. If you have questions about that, go check out my video called how I use high level for 40 plus clients in that I outline how we use that uh, advanced messenger setup. So in our case, let's just say we want to start conversations. So what I'm going to do is click here on edit. And when somebody clicks on our ads, it's going to say, hi, please let us know how we can help you. And then we can put these different questions. Can I learn more about your business? Can you tell me about your ad? Is anyone available to chat? This isn't the best way I would say to start someone out because you're giving them too many options. So instead, let's go to generate leads and we'll click create. We'll do the welcome message. We can say, please answer a few questions so we get to know you better. Then we can ask them specific questions here, set up different things, ask them like, hey, what's your name, phone, and email uh, inside of this. So we'll do, what's your phone number, uh, email, what's your email, et cetera. And this allows the person to respond, us to collect that information, and then we can follow up with that lead later. That's how a messenger campaign works. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of that just because we didn't really do much work on it. And this is, and, and I just want to show you inside of Facebook, this is where you would post your, your primary text, your headline description that we talked about in the ad copy section and the creative section is, this is where you'd add that media as well. All right. So coming over to TikTok, let's talk about lead forms. So we've got the ad name, you know, we can name it whatever we want. Uh, TikTok account, we can select the identity here, the ad details. But here, let's talk about the instant form. If we click create on the form, it's gonna show us, okay, you can click on this, the advanced form or the classic form. Let's go ahead and do advanced. And then it's going to say, would you like more volume or higher intent leads? I always like to start with more volume and then go higher intent if the uh, quality isn't super high. So let's go higher intent, that looks great. We'll do the dark color scheme. Then we can come to banner. We'd upload an image here, introduction. We'd say, hi, put your information here, another headline there. And then we can ask as many questions as we want. Uh, so not as many, but we could schedule an appointment. We could uh, you know, do a short answer, but right now we're just asking for their email and their name. Uh, we could also do a phone number as well. And once they fill out all of this information, we say, okay, this is our privacy policy. There's a review screen. You can customize uh, anything else that you'd like to add. So a text block, a carousel, whatever it is. And then there's a set thank you screen. This is how you actually capture that lead from the TikTok ad. Hey guys, I know that wasn't a ton of context when it comes to lead forms. So I wanted to hop in here to one of my client accounts and show you how we set up lead forms if we're running lead forms. We typically do messenger, but sometimes we'll run lead forms. So you can see here, we've got the name of the practice. This is blurred out just to protect them. The logo or the you know, face on the page, and then the picture of the ad behind uh, both of these. This is for Facebook. TikTok's going to be very similar. Uh, now it's going to say, thanks for choosing, you know, this company. Uh, for a limited time, we're offering 500 off your full treatment price. 
So you put the offer, reiterate it again here. Who are you scheduling this appointment for? They might select myself, then they'll click next. Once they click next, it'll take them to this uh, next screen where it says full name, phone number, email. Uh, they'll submit all of this and it'll say, here's the privacy policy, click submit if you agree. And then on the last page, this is kind of a tricky thing that we do. Um, it says almost done, request an appointment below. View our calendar and schedule a time that works best for you. Click the link below. Not everybody will actually go to the page where they schedule, but a percentage of people will come through, actually choose a time that works best for them. And then we can call and confirm that appointment. And we know who's you know most qualified, who actually took the time to go through and look for a time that's good for them. So the page that they go to to schedule, which is a very generic looking booking page. Let me pull it up here so you can see. All right, so here's the page. We've got the logo. Select the day and time below that works for you. We will call you to confirm the availability of the appointment. Obviously, this looks good on mobile as well. Then they come through. This is using Go High Level. They just schedule the date and time that works for them. And then we will call to confirm that. This isn't actually hooked up to their software or anything. This is just them suggesting a time that works for them. And then we'll call to confirm the availability. You could also come through here and reiterate the offer again. That would be a good thing to do. So that's how we use lead ads for orthodontists. Obviously your niche is going to be a little bit different, but wanted to give you some more context on that because I know I kind of rushed through that lead ad example. Thanks so much and back to the video. All right, lastly, we're gonna talk about landing pages. And for this, I thought we might just go look at an example of somebody who has really good landing pages. Uh, because they take a while to build. It's not quite as straightforward as Messenger or uh, setting up lead forms either. So uh, Premier Orthodontics, these guys have really good ads. So if we come here to learn more, you can see they're doing back to school braces special, start braces for 79 per month or Invisalign for 97 per month. Uh, schedule this and this is what you'll get. And we're scrolling down here. It's giving us all the information about how awesome they are and why. And then we have multiple options to schedule with them. We can click here, we can call or text this number, we can select a location. Creating these is a very involved process. The best place to do it would be on Go High Level. I have a number of videos about Go High Level if you don't know what it is. Uh, and eventually I might come out with a landing page builder one specifically. Basically, if you have no idea you know, how you'd go about building something like this, it's very intuitive, like a drag and drop builder that you'd be able to create. Um, a similar page to this on. But for most beginners, you probably wanna start with Messenger or lead forms just because it's a lot less work and you're already trying to focus on so many things and your head could be spinning from trying to focus on that many things. All right, now let's talk about lead nurturing. Lead nurturing is super important because most agencies stop right when the lead is generated. Uh, as a beginner, that's totally fine, but eventually you want to really help your clients build out or even hire a team of lead nurturers, which is what I've done, so that your clients don't have to deal with it and you don't have to deal with your clients trying to do it and botching it almost every time. Illustrate how important this is. I'm going to tell a story. I got connected with an agency owner who has been in the dental niche for a really long time. And you know they kept churning clients because they wouldn't follow up with the leads properly. And then they would go back to the agency and just say, hey, these leads suck. I can't get on the phone with them. It's really frustrating. Uh, so we need to cancel. And he said they started listening to the conversations that the front desk people in these dental offices were having with the prospective patients who were coming through the ads. And there were some crazy things that they found when they started listening to the recorded conversations. Um, number one, they would find uh, team members gossiping about the doctor, saying negative things about the doctor behind his or her back. Uh, they would find people actually not knowing what services were being offered at that practice. So things like, oh, oh, you want Invisalign? We don't do Invisalign. The people down the street do Invisalign. When that practice is running ads for Invisalign, they're literally just losing money hand over fist because of this front desk. It's, it's such an important part of running any type of business, but it's almost always neglected. And the front office just isn't paid well enough or they can't attract the good talent to come. And so they, don't have a $3 million business, they have a $1 million business because their front office is 
you know, botching things. So this agency actually went on to create a software where they listen to every single call, they rate the call based on a few different factors, and they allow the doctor to really have a grasp on what's going on at the front desk or the business owner in your case doesn't have to be a doctor. And I can't tell you how important this is. So even if you don't do it yourself, you need to understand how to do it effectively. And the elements of lead nurturing, as you can see on the screen, we've got texts, calls, emails, and retargeting ads. Retargeting ads aren't going to be huge when it comes to local business because most local businesses, like the audience is so small, as I mentioned earlier, that the minute you try to run a retargeting ad, the audience is like literally 100 people or something like that. And so you can't target and it just ends up spending way too much and not actually reaching the people that you want it to reach or it shows up in front of the same 10 people 100 times and you get charged for that and the people are upset because they keep seeing the same ad over and over and over again. Retargeting ads would be very helpful for something like e-commerce or an online coach for those national campaigns with the really big audiences uh, where you have like a top of funnel campaign and then you keep moving down. Very smart for those types of businesses. So we're not gonna talk about retargeting ads further than what I've just mentioned because I don't really run them, but these text calls and emails are going to be huge and we're gonna show you how to set those up inside of Go High Level. Alrighty, so now let's talk about how we actually get those texts, calls, and emails to the prospect so that we can nurture them into a free consultation or whatever free offer it is that we're uh, going for. If uh, we were working with local businesses, this is pretty much standard, like across the board, everybody's gonna have some sort of like free thing or low ticket paid thing, you know, like $39 teeth cleaning or, uh, you know, $49 new patient special for a chiropractor. Anyway, it's usually going to be free or it's going to be like you schedule the appointment, but you don't pay for the appointment until you get there. So that's the local business lead nurturing when it comes to online business lead nurturing. So e-commerce or um, coaches or consulting or something like that. It's a similar thing. Coaches and consultants will just generate leads off of maybe a free book or a PDF or a video or something like that. And then they'll continue to email those leads or text those leads or even call those leads to get them on the phone so they can sell them something. When it comes to e-commerce, people will go to the website and maybe some people will add to cart but not check out. And if they've done that, then they'll follow up, keep sending them uh, emails with different product offerings so that they can come back to the website and buy more. And same thing, if they purchase, then they're just going to say, wow, this person actually bought from us. Let's go ahead and send them more information on more products so that we can make more money off of them. In this video, we're going to focus on the local lead generation nurturing and then also for uh, you know, coaches and consultants, it would look quite similar in this case. If you don't know what it is, go ahead and watch some other videos on it that I have on my channel. But basically what it is is a customer relationship management tool or a CRM. And this is like what most businesses are lacking nowadays, a place to track their leads, to organize their leads, to follow up with leads in a timely, organized manner. This is super, super important. Like people just sell this. They don't even sell the ad service. They just sell the CRM and have a lot of success in that side. So how do we actually get this to work? Well, we need to generate the leads and then we need the leads to plug into somewhere so that we can text, call and email them. So when it comes to go high level here, if we're running Facebook ads, let's say for example, we could come into integrations and go ahead and integrate our Facebook account with this test account. Now I'm gonna continue as myself and we'll go ahead and link a, a random Facebook page that I have to this go high level account. Uh, let's see. We can do Keaton's escape room. This is a fake page that I've created in the past. Awesome. So now that my Facebook account is connected, it's saying that the integration expired, but should still be connected. If we refresh this page, there we go. It's connected. Awesome. So now that we've had those connected, let's say we're running Facebook messenger ads. Those ads, believe it or not, are actually all going to come in here. Anybody who messages us is actually going to just populate inside of high level just like that. That's it. That's all we have to do to get the messages ads. Isn't that cool? But if we wanted to text that lead as well as Facebook message them, we can also do that inside of Go High Level, which is so, so cool. As you can see, this uh, phone number, this random phone number, like called this number that I have set up on this account and nothing happened there. But if I wanted to send them a text back and say like, hey, How's it going? Would you like to sign up for our free consultation or whatever it is, right? 
great. And then I would click send, that would send them the SMS. Let's say I put an email in here, test119 at test.com. Now it's going to give me the option to email this person as well if I refresh the page. So you can see we come back here to this person that we were just talking to and we have an SMS option and an email option. Very, very cool. Look at that. And what's also cool is I have templates here that I could save. I don't have any here, but if I wanted to add a specific template that uh, you know I could follow up with every single person just specifically with that template to save myself time, I could do that in the template section. Now, let's say I wanna call this person. All I have to do is click on this call button and it's gonna start dialing them. And then I can connect with them, say, hey, what's up? You know, do you wanna connect or buy your free pass or whatever? Uh, I can also type in phone numbers here. All of these things can happen within one spot from every single platform. If you want to connect, you know, the lead ads that you're running on TikTok in here as well, you probably have to use a third party integration app like Zapier um, to connect the two apps together. Great. So you're probably seeing the vision like, okay, I know we can call text and email these people, but how often should we do each of those things? And that's a great question. What I do in my agency is we have a set of automated texts that go out. So if I come here to automation, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on this drafted workflow. And let's say we're running a Facebook lead ads on here. So a Facebook lead form submitted and it is in a specific form. There's no forms in this account, but we'd select a specific form there. We click save trigger, uh, we'll click save trigger there. So any Facebook lead form that's submitted, we're gonna send them a text. And the text is gonna say, hey, thanks for requesting whatever from this account. If you're interested in blah, 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 thanks, like Joe's Chiropractic. Awesome. Look at that. Now we have an automated message going out every time someone submits a lead form on Facebook that we've already set up. And then when they text back, or even if they don't text back, everything's going to show up in that same exact dashboard inside of conversations here. Very, very cool. You can also build out these automations to be extremely robust. So it's not just uh, a text that sends, but you could also send them an email. So we put the from name, from email, and then we'd say like, you know, claim your special offer here. Great, uh, we'll go ahead, sorry, I'll take myself off the screen, claim your special offer here, that looks great. And then uh, we could also do like a voicemail drop. So we can leave them a specific voicemail we could upload here. And then on this wait step, we can do, uh, instead of just a time delay, we can actually wait for somebody to reply. So we can wait 30 minutes for them to reply, let's say. And if they've replied to this SMS, then we can set up an if else step. And if they've replied at all, so let's just say, yes, they've replied. Then we can do something specific like, okay, respond to them, send them another text that says, Great, when works to connect over the phone. And then on the no side, we could just send them another text that says, hey, I want to make sure you get booked. You know, say something else, obviously make that longer. Uh, and look at that. Now we have like a pretty robust, like this is way better than any follow-up person. Uh, it's obviously automated, so it's not quite as good as a, a real person, but it's faster than a person would ever be um, and can read things, you know, really complex logic it can read and figure out and make sure that you're doing the right thing for every single lead that comes through. So pretty legit. Awesome. So that's how the workflows would work. But on top of that, you obviously need to be calling these leads as much as possible to actually get them to offer whatever else you're doing. So what we do on my team is I have my team of appointment setters call every single day for three days. And they don't just call once, they call twice and that equals one call. So as soon as the lead comes in, as soon as they can get to it, they'll call. And then if they don't answer, then they'll call again immediately after, and then they'll leave a voicemail on that second time. So they call a total of six times, but really just three times uh, because each of those are right in a row. And then if somebody responds to a text or a phone call, They'll obviously book them on the phone call. If they respond to a text and we're not able to get them on the phone, then we'll just message back and forth, texting them and get them to uh, claim whatever offer it is that the orthodontist we're working with is running at that time. If I were running a lead nurturing campaign for a coach or a consultant or something like that, 
probably come here to automation instead of uh, sending so many texts, you do email. I mean, text could work extremely well, but what I would do is just, um, typically a lot of these people are not, sorry. Typically a lot of these are not, um, you know, gonna happen right away. Uh, the, a lot of the sales aren't gonna happen right away, that is. So I would come in here and I would just say, wait. And I would say, wait 24 hours. And then I would just send them another email. And in that email, I would say uh, something else about why we're so awesome. And then we'd go again, we'd wait another 24 hours. And we do the same thing. Send them another email. I know people who send emails just like this forever, like six months they'll send an email just like this. And then if somebody, you know, gets to the end of the six months and they have a purchase from you, then you just kind of tag them a different way. So you could say, if somebody arrives here, we add a tag and the tag is like not engaged. Let's say, add that new tag, click save action. And then uh, you can take, uh, we could go into another workflow. Sorry, let's save this one. And let's say when this tag has been added, So contact tag is tag added, um, not engaged. Then we could go ahead and remove them from all workflows so they don't keep getting more emails. Awesome, as simple as that. So as you can see, there's a lot of different options to nurture these leads. High level is the most powerful, robust, everything fits in one spot that I've ever found. Uh, please, please sign up. My link is below. Um, like you can sign up without my link. I really appreciate it if you sign up with my link, but like this has single-handedly changed my life. High level is insane. It's so good. And every agency owner should be using it. All right, awesome guys. So that's pretty much it when it comes to lead nurturing. The next thing in our sequence of what it takes to get a client results is uh, actually appointment scheduling and reminders. So phone scripts, texts, calls, emails, all these things go into getting client results as well because you can't schedule the initial consult or whatever it is that you're scheduling and then not remind the person to show up. And even if you just schedule it and you don't really engage with them, they're likely to no-show. And so you have to focus on getting rid of the no-show issue or the cancellation issue as well as the lead problem and then the lead booking problem. As you can see, it's just a series of how do we isolate each one and try to make it as seamless as possible so that our client gets as much success as possible. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it when it comes to lead nurturing. The next thing when it comes to getting client results is actually focusing on appointment scheduling. So how do we schedule the appointment effectively so that we make a good connection with them and they show up? And then reminders so that they show up for those appointments as well. It doesn't do you any good to schedule 15 appointments for a business if none of those appointments show. And a lot of that has to do with how you schedule the appointment and then how you uh, send those reminders out. So when it comes to scheduling, the most important thing you can do is phone scripts. Uh, I'd spent a long time building my out, met with multiple consultants about what we should say on this call. I'm not going to share the exact specifics of it, but essentially what would happen is when we call someone, we say, hey, how's it going? We're just making sure that you're scheduling this appointment for yourself. Is that right? They say yes. We say, oh, cool. You know, uh, it looks like you're having some maybe spacing or crowding issues with your teeth. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Oh, um, you know, I've had some issues with this for the last few years. Uh, I've really wanted to get it fixed. This is what's going on with my mouth. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear that. Uh, have you been thinking about it, getting it fixed just recently? Or is there something coming up that would uh, motivate you to do it right now? And they're like, oh, no, I think it's just a good time. Then we brief them on how that consultation would go, talk up the doctor, talk up the practice. And then this is a really cool hack that you can do. Oh, do you know anybody else that would be interested in uh, braces or Invisalign that we might be able to bring in with you in this uh, consult? Maybe your son or daughter or someone else, a friend or family member. This, a lot of times they'll say, oh yeah, my son, Like, but I don't know if he's old enough. And we say, you know what? Everybody over eight should probably get an orthodontic consultation. Oh, wow, really? Okay, I'll bring him in. And then at the very end, we say, hey, this appointment is very important. Uh, we would hate for you to uh, reserve the spot and have somebody else you know, not be able to take that spot. So if 
you do have to cancel, will you please let me know? That's totally fine. Make sure you tell me with some time beforehand so we can reschedule yours. Is that all right? Oh yeah, that'd be totally fine. Okay, cool. And now they think twice about canceling, but they're also willing to cancel instead of just no show if it is that they really do have to cancel. So that's the essentials on phone scripts. Uh, you can, you know, kind of research depending on your niche, it's going to be very different. But basically, you want to make an emotional connection with that person, tell them what's going to happen when they visit the business, and then impress upon their minds the importance of this appointment that we're reserving it for them. And if they do need to cancel, they need to let us know. So once we've gotten off the phone with that person, that's in an ideal situation where we were able to get them on the phone. That doesn't always happen. If we book them over text, it's okay. But we want to try to get as many people on the phone as possible. Once we've gotten them on the phone, then we want to send them a series of texts to remind them uh, to come to their appointment, which you can set up and go high level. I'll show you that in just a minute. But this part's really important. You also need to make sure that you call them 24 hours to 48 hours before their appointment because getting them on the phone, leaving them a real voicemail saying, hey, we're lo really looking forward to seeing you. We would love to, you know, uh, collect these few pieces of information before you come in. If you can give us a call back or if you connect with them, just say, hey, Johnny, uh, I'm just really looking forward to seeing you tomorrow for your appointment. Just want to make sure you're still good for that. Oh yeah, I'll be there. Don't worry. Now the business, whatever it is, can really count on that thing happening instead of wasting their time with no shows, etc. So now when it comes to the texts and emails to remind people to show up, let's hop back into high level here and set up a sample campaign for that. Go ahead and share my screen. Create workflow, start from scratch. So here, let's say somebody's appointment is booked. Customer booked appointment, look at that. Save trigger. Then we come here and we're going to send an SMS. Um, and we're just gonna say, great, your appointment is booked for, you know, whenever. And we can do in here contact, or we can do, sorry, appointment, start date and time, great. Then what we can do here is wait. And instead of a time delay, we can do event or appointment time. So we're gonna send this, let's say one day before their appointment. And we'll click save there. We would say, hey, your appointment is tomorrow. And then we can add that same custom value. And it's going to pull in the specific information for that lead. Awesome. So now we've got a text going out and email going out. I would recommend text as much as possible. Emails are not quite as good as getting people should to show up. Hey friends, just wanted to hop in here and show you uh, the appointment confirmation and reminder sequence that we use in our agency. So as you can see, the trigger here is appointment confirmed. And here we're going to remove them from any sort of lead nurture workflow that we have them in, any other, just any workflows we're removing them from. Uh, we're going to notify the office. Um, so this would be like, hey, congratulations, we've scheduled a new lead. This is the time. Any additional information, if collected, is below. Then we're going to add a tag, appointment booked. We're going to remove any of these tags in case they had that before. Maybe they canceled before and they had that tag. We're going to remove the opportunity from wherever it is, remove from every single other workflow that it has just as a redundancy there. Then we're going to create another opportunity, which is appointment set. If you don't know what this is, um, just watch my other high level videos. If you do, you'll understand. Um, and then the first text, this is where everyone should understand what's going on. Perfect. Your appointment to meet with Dr. Blank has been reserved for this date at this time. All of your questions regarding treatment and finances will be answered at your consultation. Save to Google Calendar, save to iCal slash Outlook. Please reply Y to confirm. So if they send Y, then we're going to say, great, we'll see you then. And if they don't send it, um, and it's, it's seven days before, then we're gonna say, hi, this is a friendly reminder. Uh, your scheduled appointment with Dr. Blank is on blank and blank time, we're looking forward to meeting you. So even if they don't send the why, we just keep sending them the same exact things. Uh, 24 hours before, we'll send them another one. And here we're gonna add a link to Google Maps. So you can just grab that link, pop it in there, and then they can send why to confirm or end to cancel. And then if they've sent why here, we're gonna come here and they'll receive this text, which says wonderful first name, we'll see you then. 
Ashley with location name. Then if we come to this side and they send N, then we'll try to reschedule them right away. And one hour before, we're just gonna send them a AC and an hour text. And they should have all of these previous ones in their text thread, so they'll be able to uh, get that Google Maps link as well. And then at the very end, we have a notification sent to the practice that says, hi, wanna know how your recent consultation went? Uh, go ahead and click here to update it inside of Hotmail. And that's how we do our appointment confirmations and reminders. As you can see, folks, it's not a walk in the park getting clients results. I just wanted to come back to these original slides and talk a little bit about, first of all, a recap of everything that we've learned, and then what to do if, for some reason, your campaign isn't working. So just to recap, remember, you've got your ad, which includes the body copy, the headline, and the creative. You've got your ad targeting, which is different based on the platform. You've got your lead capture, which is how you actually collect the lead and deliver it to the client. You've got the post lead capture nurturing, which is automated text, also real calls, automated emails. And then lastly, we have automated appointment scheduling and reminders, which is how we build an emotional connection with the prospect, get them to schedule and then actually get them to show up. So now what do we do if our campaign isn't working? Um, as you can see, I've kind of got this straight line drawn out and then each thing that I just talked about represents one of these boxes and the line. So we start with our ads, then our targeting, lead capture, lead nurture, and then scheduling, when reminders, and then eventually the sale, which the client handles. You wouldn't be handling that in a traditional agency. So the answer of what to do if your campaign isn't working is to focus on each one of these variables and then test. For most of you, the place that things are gonna fall down in the biggest way are probably going to be the ad and then also the lead nurture and the appointment schedule. These three are the most crucial part of it because the targeting you can get wrong and still get the rest of it really right and do quite well. Um, but if you're not nurturing the leads at all and you're not actually calling to schedule the appointments or getting on the phone fast enough with the prospects or the leads that come through, there's actually no point in running the ad. So let's talk about how we isolate each of these variables and what we should be testing. So first of all, the ad, we can swap out the headline, we can swap out the copy, we can swap out the pictures, and we could try a brand new offer. So if we're doing 500 off, for example, we could change to 250 off or 750 off and see if that makes any difference. We could also put like another container word on that offer like, oh, it's a summer special moves to a back to school special when it comes September time. Just a quick note on this, this is probably the hardest part. Some markets will be very, very easy and your ads will just take off without you trying. Some markets will be harder and it's honestly difficult to tell if it's the market or if it's the client or if it's for some reason Facebook shadow batting the page or whatever it is. Just keep in mind that whatever it is, you just have to keep testing until you find something that works. And I've been very, very surprised that I've been able to get things to work or a white label partner has been able to get things to work for my clients that I previously have not been able to get to work. So just something to keep in mind. Add targeting here. Uh, first of all, you can expand it. Uh, so let's say you're targeting at eight miles, you can go to 10 miles, contract it. You could go from eight to five miles. You could try detailed targeting. Uh, so add interests like interested in health and beauty if you're doing a med spa or Invisalign or dental campaigns. Uh, you could try auto or non-auto placements. Uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, don't worry about it. it. just means where the ad is actually placed on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, you can adjust languages. So just have uh, one ad set going to English and one ad set going to Spanish. Um, and then you can also split ad sets. So you could do a male ad set with all pictures of male people and then a female ad set with all pictures of female people and see which one works better. Next up, we have the lead capture. You can change the copy in the lead capture, the creative, the layout of the landing page, uh, or you could switch the lead capture. So you could change from messenger to a lead form, or you could change from a lead form to a landing page, whatever else you think might work better. Uh, always a good option. This last one I would say is a big deal because it also changes a little bit of the targeting. If you run a messenger campaign, for example, you'd be targeting people who like to run, you'd be targeting people who like to click and message people through messenger. So uh, it targets a slightly different demographic within the same uh, radius. Next up, we've got lead nurture. So 
something really important here is you can go into a client account and sweep their account and see like, okay, it looks like you haven't followed up with this person or you only called this person once or you only texted them once. And when the client comes to you and says, the leads are so bad, you come through and you show them how good of a job uh, their team is doing following up with these leads. And that's why it's so important to have something like Go High Level because it helps you actually see how the follow-up is being managed. And if it's being managed poorly, you can coach the client's team. Next up, we've got more automation. So you could add more text, more emails, more voicemail drops, or you could scale it back and do less automation. Maybe that's better for certain markets. You just find it works better. You could do a warm transfer. So this is where you actually hire a team of people to call the leads and say, hey, how's it going? This is uh, Joe from ABC Dental. Uh, just looking to schedule your appointment. They're like, great. You're like, awesome. I'm going to transfer you to our scheduling coordinator. Then he patches that call through to the office. The office answers the call and they take it from there. That just gets them, uh, it, it integrates the lead into something that they're very familiar with, which is getting a call in the office and they're trained to answer the phone. Uh, and then lastly, hire appointment setters. This is what I've done. We just call the leads. We talk to the leads. We book the leads on their schedule. All of that um, gets rid of the lead nurture headache, but you also have to keep obviously training your appointment setters and improving their processes as well. Next up, appointment scheduling. You need to create a script. Uh, this is super important. Everybody should have a script for actually calling the leads so that when your clients are calling them and they're completely botching it, you can say, hey, no, this is what you should actually be saying. Uh, next up here, we've got training your clients. Like you should have a call where you train them on how to call, how to follow the script, how to do things correctly in their office. Uh, the next one you can try here is to open up appointment availability. So if for some reason they're just booked out all the time, you could say, hey, your consults don't really need to be an hour long. They could be 30 minutes long. You can accomplish everything you need to within 30 minutes. And that way you could book twice as many people in one day. And you know that might absolutely blow their minds. You could also open up evening or weekend appointments, and that will allow a lot more of these leads that come in to be scheduled sooner rather than later, which helps with no-shows and helps with people just being committed and actually closing. Uh, last thing, review client calls and rate. So if you go through the client account and you listen to one of the calls that the uh, team members have done, um, then you can rate it, send the info back to the doctor or the, the owner of the business and help them see what's actually going on, give them visibility into what their front desk is actually doing with these leads. And lastly, we've got appointment reminders. You can add more or less texts. This goes for emails as well. You could incorporate a call 24 to 48 hours before. This is very important. You could also incorporate video. So something like, hey, we're so excited to see you come into XYZ Chiropractic. And it's a picture or a video of the doctor explaining why he's excited for that person to come in. I believe there's also softwares we can record this video once and we'll actually insert the person's name in the video so that it looks real and it looks like it was a custom video just for that person. So just some food for thought on each one of these variables. It's super, super important that you test each one and just keep trying and trying until you get amazing results for your clients because the better results you get for your clients, the happier they will be, the more referrals you will get, the better reputation your agency will have and the happier you will be the fact. So my recommendation here is to get as good as you can at isolating each variable in this uh, timeline that you see here and improving each one so that you can get consistent results across the board for every client you bring on. Uh, guys, there's so much that goes into these um, people actually showing up for what they signed up for. So taking someone from a stranger to a customer, wow. As you can see, it's a lot of work. Uh, but when you do all of these things, I promise you, there's something called the aggregation of marginal gains. And when you start putting all of these things together, it really creates a marketing firestorm for these businesses that wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. And that's why you, uh, the agency owner, are so important because you can help local businesses do what they wouldn't do otherwise. Also coaches, consultants, e-com, all that kind of thing. Guys, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, it takes me a lot of work to put videos like this together. If it helped you, please leave a comment below. Consider kind of signing up for coaching. We do cap that at 10 members, and I think we're at seven right now. So if you'd like to join, now's a good time. There will likely be a waiting list soon. And with all of that said, guys, thanks so much for joining. We'll see you next time.